Today we have an awesome revenge story against an awful thieving roommate. We'll get to that in a bit, but first, I didn't even mean for this to happen. When my new neighbor and I met for the first time when she moved in, I was holding my 8 month old girl. New neighbor said, I sure hope that baby doesn't make a lot of noise, I'm so not up for that. Bit surprising when she did almost all of her home improvement from 8 till midnight and the tone was set. She complained about baby noises and just about everything we did in the house and or garden to the housing corporation, and she didn't want to sit down for a talk, so I simply ignored her for ages. She ignored me too, apart from some nasty comments to friends or her boyfriend about me. No idea why I deserved that. Some random Friday in the summer, doorbell rang. A nice lady told me that my neighbors had their keys hanging in their lock, and nobody was home as she tried the door. Maybe I wanted to take the keys? Of course, I didn't, but I did feel bad because I saw them before when they left the house with swimming stuff, so I guess they would be away for the day. Walked over, I locked their door, tossed the key into the letterbox, and as soon as it fell on the floor, I realized what I had done. I still hoped that they had a spare key, but it turned out they didn't. So they had to call a locksmith on Friday evening, which means the weekend payment was in order. Over 300 euros. Loved it eventually. I mean, hey, one could argue that OP was being helpful here. Thank God they didn't leave their front door unlocked, and not only that, but inviting people to try the door. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy awesome stories of revenge, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, don't want me on guest list? Guess you're not allowed backstage. A few months ago, I met one of the biggest tour managers for some of the biggest music artists, Bill. We met through Chad, an event promoter who had screwed up on hospitality with a VIP artist, and asked me to handle and make up for it seeing as I work in luxury hospitality. I agreed to help and asked for nothing in return. This isn't the first time I vouched for them when an artist is upset with their screw ups. I've always had a crush on Chad, but he pays me no attention. I've never asked to be on the guest list, as I want to support Chad's business and promotions company. I've been a loyal supporter for years. Bill and I ended up getting along fabulously and have become pretty good friends. Bill says I've got guest list for life. I see a show coming up by Chad's company. Bill tells me he knows the artist's manager and will have my friend and I on the list. It worked out well since I'd waited to get cheaper tier tickets and I couldn't stay all night. I've been assured I'm on the list. I've seen screenshots that I'm on it. I get to the venue and nope, not on the list. I ask them to reach out to Chad because Bill's in another time zone in another country and I can't call him. I call Chad and his number two, who's my typical point of contact, no answers from anyone. I end up paying for tickets for me and my friend on top of $40 for parking, $100 total. I tell Bill the next day and he is pissed. I never hear anything back from Chad. Chad's number two tells me the next day, I was on the list, but they didn't get the list until after I arrived. I tell him how much I had to shell out for a night that was supposed to be only parking and he says, we lost money on that show and you expect your money back? I tell Bill about this and he's even more livid. He tells me he'll handle dumb and dumber. The next show by Chad is by far the biggest artist in the music genre, Bill's client as well. Bill decides to come out and visit me for a few days before the show. He lets Chad know three of my friends and I are all to be VIP guests. Chad tells Bill he's not comfortable with that many people backstage. Bill expresses very politely that he doesn't give a crap and that he's the man in charge of the guest list for the artist. Obviously there isn't any problems getting in this time, I literally roll in with the artist team. Fabulous night. Bill gives Chad a stern talking to about his treatment of me and says I'm to be treated as one of his artists going forward. This show was in November. The artist was getting ready to have one of his biggest shows ever this month in another country. I convinced Chad to get his passport and come to the country for the show. Bill put him on the most basic guest list with meh tickets and tells me Chad needs a wake up call and we'll get him backstage after he comes and says hello and thank you. Neither Bill or I had heard from Chad since November, and suddenly he's posting on social media he's been invited to this show, and making it seem like he got the invite because of his awesomeness and not because I asked for him to be given the invite. Chad sends me a sad face about the lack of VIP access once at the show. I send a sad face back. I tell him to come find me and say hello. I have backstage passes for him and his friends, but I don't tell him. 
He never comes to say hi to me or Bill. No thank you for getting me in free at least, and then leaves early. I should offer him some water. I think he's a little salty. I think it goes without saying, but Bill is kind of awesome. It's also almost a little bit sweeter that Chad chose to just dip early and not get any of the benefits. This next story is a dish best served cold. So I have this roommate. I live with eight other people in one house. This particular roommate and I do not get along, whereas everyone else in the house, I do get along. They've made serious accusations and disturbing lies about me and tried to rally my other roommates to kick me out. Clearly, that didn't work out so well. Plus, I was good friends with the landlord and, without evidence, my roommate couldn't do anything. Anyways, a few days ago, it was a heavy and cold and windy rainstorm in my city. My roommate just came back from vacation that night. I heard them quite easily because I live near the ground floor of the house. I heard them trying to call someone, not once, not twice, but four times. Nothing. Then she called me. I thought to myself, ah, she's trying to get into the house. I was about to pick up my phone to let them in, but then thought, no, this person needs to be taught a cold, hard lesson. So I left my phone alone and let it go to voicemail. I heard her swearing. Then I heard her trying to knock on the door. Nothing. Intercom? Nothing. Finally, she gave up and I saw her leaving for the hotel across the street from my house. It may not be nuclear, but this revenge was something that needed to happen. I slept nice and hard that night. I just want to know exactly like why this roommate hates OP that much. I mean, generally, if you have a roommate, obviously, you want to try to be civil with them. You don't want to have a hostile household. I mean, going to the lengths of trying to do like some makeshift survivor show, I want to vote OP off the island type behavior. Like, it has to be inspired by something, right? Our next story is, I got tired of my ex lying about me and ignoring our son, so I decided to prove who he really is. My husband Jay, 48, abused me, 53, physically and mentally for years. He threatened me when I said I was leaving him and terrorized me mercilessly. When he'd finally beaten my self-esteem down to nothing, he started talking to other women online, so I kicked him out. In his online excursions, he met Kay, 37, who lives about 12 hours away. Fine, great, divorce me. But no, and not only that, after I kicked him out, he decided I wouldn't be able to use the car I had found, financed, and paid for. Not even to take our son, 15, to therapy. He needed it to drive to Georgia from Arkansas to see his soulmate. In the interim, he had lied to me, cheated on her with me, and told everyone he knows that I'm crazy. The thing he didn't know was that I'd taken pics every time he hurt me and saved them, along with all the threatening texts and messages, and put them in cloud storage. All I want is a divorce, which I can't afford, and to be able to use my car, but he would rather just blame everything on me and continue on with his life while not contributing anything, even a phone call, to our son, and refuse me the car because his Georgia peach is the most precious thing in the world to him, for now. So I printed out every picture, every text, every message, and packaged them for select people, so the truth would be known. For Kay, I'm going to rent a car and take a road trip. I want to see her face when she sees what a lying piece of crap he is. And some of those pics are pretty brutal. All I wanted was fairness, honesty, and to actually share my car occasionally. Kay has one, but since my son and I are dead to him, it was just ignored. So I decided to fix things myself. Petty and vindictive? You bet your butt it is. But if I might get my divorce, my car, and my name out of his lying mouth, it will all have been worth it. A lot of people might have suggested OP go to the police first, but apparently OP clarified in the comments the police already have most of it. They kind of insinuated that this guy was arrested multiple times. So I just hope for OP and their son that they're safe and things get better for them. Our next story is, girl who played me ends up getting played by the dude she cheated on me with. Myself, male 26, and my ex, female 24, let's call her M, had been dating for about 6 months. The first 5 months were great. We started off slow, seeing each other once or twice a week for the first month. I realized I really liked this girl after our fourth date. She came back to my place that night and magic happened. After that we started talking every day and I basically had zero desire to talk to any other women. 
I deleted my dating apps, cut contact with this other girl I'd been with a couple of times right before I met M, and felt good that me and M had a good thing going. I include these details because it's important to an incident that happens down the road. For the next five months, we went out every weekend, spending almost every whole weekend together. So one night, after a night out having food and seeing a comedy show, she's just in an awful mood. There were about six comedians performing one after the other. The first dude came up and had that whole, witches ain't crap, blah blah blah, don't ever settle act. It got laughs, but not for me. After his set, immediately, my girlfriend leaned over and asked what that was all about. I just shrugged and said he thinks negatively of women. It's a comedy show, so take it with a grain of salt. She just said, I know. But then the whole rest of the show, she couldn't find anything funny. Fast forward to the second to last guy who had a funny story about his cheating ex, but no hatred in his voice. He seemed over it and didn't badmouth her at all, especially compared to the first guy. M wanted to leave after this, and I didn't object because I could tell she wasn't enjoying herself. The car ride home was absolute projecting at its finest. For 15 minutes I was hit with accusations of finding misogyny to be okay and that I'm probably cheating on her because all men do it. While I was driving I literally unlocked my phone telling her to look through my texts. Wasn't enough. I dropped her off and she said we were finished and that she had never seen this side of me before. I sat there shocked and at a loss for words. She got out and didn't turn back, just walked in her house. Not gonna lie, I cried on the drive home once I was out of her presence. It was that helpless feeling of thinking you did everything right but realizing it's not gonna work. A month passes by and I'm sort of over it. I had reached out once, being ignored, and then the feelings dissipated gradually with no contact between us. Hindsight really is a witch. Why didn't I see through the BS sooner? Fast forward to a Friday night where I'm just hanging with a couple buddies. I get a call from an unknown number. I ignore it. Five minutes later, a text. Hey man, I think you and I should talk. You know Em, I saw her text between you two and I think you're gonna enjoy this. I could feel this grin coming across my face as I realized what was happening. I knew before he told me. I call him and he basically told me that she was playing both of us. Except this dude had a far worse end of the stick. Come to find out they've been married for two years and he was home in Brazil taking care of his dying mother for the last six months. He reassured me that he wasn't mad at me and that he knew I was a good guy. I just felt bad for the guy at this point. Here's the best part. He then explains to me that this past weekend they drove in his registered car about six hours out of town for a concert and weekend getaway. At the concert her phone died and he went to use the bathroom. He slipped away, drove back home in his car, and packed up all her crap out of their house. He then drove another 90 minutes to her parents' house, explaining the whole situation and dropped her crap off there. He blocked her number after she demanded he pay for her flight home. Let's just say her parents aren't too proud of their daughter's decisions, and have reached out to her husband numerous times begging for his forgiveness. What a guy to reach out to me and share his delicious shenanigans. Still friends. Well, you find out you have an Eskimo brother and a new friend, apparently. Honestly, the dude does sound like a pretty nice guy. Probably pretty easy to actually be friends with somebody like that. Especially somebody that goes to a whole different country to make sure they take care of their sick mother. Our next story is, only I get to mess with the pest. Okay, the little pest is my little brother. I was three, no, two and a half years old, as he likes to point out, when he was born. I was too young to remember, but apparently I wasn't happy that my mother had to stay in the hospital hooked to random machines for his birth. I told my mom I didn't want him coming home with us, and why would they need him when she already had me, her favorite person in the whole wide world. Spoiler alert, she did not listen to me. Pity. Anyway, fast forward almost a decade, we were both in school. While not Sheldon Cooper genius, I had good enough grades with little to no effort. But Lil Pest was not that into studying. He's smart, but academics were not his thing. So, Mommy Dearest hired a tutor for both of us. Mostly for him. This dude came with high praise for my mom's colleague. He seemed okay enough, but with a feigned authoritative air around him. One fine evening, just a week or so after he started tutoring us, he tried to poke his nose into my work. I had missed a day in school and was absent for a whole chapter in math class. It was applications of Pythagoras theorem, 
I told him I was perfectly capable of doing it by myself. Tutor Guy begrudgingly went to quiz the pest in his classwork. While I was lost in the beautiful triumph of solving a whole unit by myself, I heard the pest cry. Tutor Guy was scolding Pest for getting a question wrong. Question, what do plants exhale at night? Pest's answer was carbon dioxide. Tutor Boy's answer, oxygen. Thus, he started berating my pest. I saw red. But I calmly got up, opened the door and went to my grandma and asked her the same question while making sure both T-Boy and Pest can hear us. Grandma's answer, carbon dioxide. Next up, Grandpa. Same question, same answer. Repeat the same with Mom again. Then I turned back to T-Boy, looked him dead in the eye without saying anything and went back to the wonder that is math. A week later, the dude told my mom he can't tutor us anymore and quit. My mom wasn't even mad at me. Moral of the story, only one bully can exist in my household, and that's me. I feel like this is classic TV or sitcom siblings. The ones that totally rip each other apart will play pranks on each other, do anything to put them in their place as a younger or older sibling, but if somebody outside your family even so much as makes a joke about somebody, they immediately leap to their defense. Some would say that's how it should be. Our next story is, take half of my biggest commission? I'll give you the worst clients when I leave. I work for a luxury dealership. About two years ago, I was working for the same manufacturer I am now just a different location. There was an older salesperson there, and boy was she cutthroat. We'll call her S. One day, I had a customer come in, and he wanted to buy one of our specialty cars. I let him know we don't discount specialty cars, they're MSRP only. This is pre-pandemic slash beginning of pandemic, so most people still expected discounts. To my surprise, he didn't have an issue with it. Now, I was just starting out in sales, so I was quite excited as this would be my biggest commission yet. I hadn't made much prior to this and was still getting the hang of everything. At one point in the deal, the customer stated he just moved to the US and didn't have insurance. I told him that's fine, we just need him to secure an insurance policy before he can leave the lot with the car. I gave him the number to an insurance company and the information he would need and went to go start on paperwork. A few minutes later, I see S sitting with my customer, at her desk, calling insurance with him. Apparently he needed some help, and S decided to swoop in and help him instead of letting me know and having me help him. She said she was just helping me out and wouldn't split the deal. Great. All she did was answer one question for him, and the insurance company anyway. Certainly not enough work to warrant half my deal. I had spent two hours with the guy. He buys the car and I'm thrilled. As we leave the store that evening, she runs up to me and says, How much did the deal make? I thought it was odd but didn't think much of it and said I wasn't sure yet. I hadn't asked my finance manager. Payday comes. I notice I have a split deal on my pay sheet with S. Funny, I don't remember working a deal with you. I go into my boss and say there's a mistake. He said S told him I agreed to split the deal since she helped with the insurance. I told him that wasn't the case. He calls her into his office and I explained to S that she in fact told me she wouldn't be taking half the deal. She proceeded to yell at me saying I was a liar and that I told her I would give her half my commission for her to help. After a lot of back and forth, I thought I'd won because my boss mentioned that he did think it was odd I would give up my biggest sale to date for 5 minutes of help. Nope, she got half. I fought with management and they took her side. Still don't know why, my guess is just that she'd been there for a long time. Fast forward a year later, I had to move for personal reasons and was told to divvy up my clients among the other salespeople. I gave S all the clients I had that were tough to deal with or knew they weren't serious about purchasing and would waste her time. Every other client went to my favorite coworker. It wasn't just because of the half deal incident. Everyone at the dealership was fed up with her because she would pull all sorts of BS constantly. I guess it was mild revenge, but it felt good. This is so scummy. It makes you wish that the people like S who try and go and steal this money from people like OP have some like big ball of guilt deep down inside them somewhere that they're forging into some kind of coal diamond. Like considering they got away with it and got half that money, I hope there's guilt about that. I hope it's something that keeps them up at night sometimes. This next story is short and sweet. Don't park like a jerk. Pulled into curbside pickup and the spot available has a car on the right over the line and the spot on the left unoccupied. Could I have hugged the left side of my spot? 
Sure, but if someone else needed that spot, I'd have a difficult time when I needed to load my groceries. Plus, it really pisses me off when people take the curbside spots to go shop normally. So I parked right smack in the middle of my spot and thoroughly enjoyed watching that guy doing the awkward shuffle squeeze to get into their car. I mean, in this situation, there's literally no way that this guy can complain about your parking job if you're right smack dab in the middle of your spot. Literally, it's like the walk of shame, the squeeze of shame getting back into their vehicle because of their poor parking job. Our next story is splitting tips. Many years ago, I worked in a tailoring shop. This place had three full-time tailors, a part-time tailor, and a receptionist of sorts. The rule was that whoever assisted the customer in any way would get equal share of the tip, including the fitter, whoever did the sewing, and the receptionist. We'll call her greedy. Suffice it to say, this ridiculous system could be quite unbalanced. I started noticing that Greedy would only hastily write the customer's name and phone number on the work tickets, hand it off to whomever was doing the fitting, and then demand she was owed a share of the tip. Blank work tickets were also at each of the fitting stations. One particularly generous tipper would always request that he wanted me to do his fitting and the work on his garments. No problem, especially since he was easygoing and a pleasure to work with. He came in one afternoon, and I immediately went up to greet him. Of course, Greedy whipped out one of the work tickets, scribbled down his name and number, and hands it to me with a huge smirk. Okay, so that's how you want to play it? It's on, Greedy! As soon as my customer enters the dressing room, I ripped up the ticket and threw it away. After he picked up his alterations, Greedy asked about the tip and what happened to the ticket she wrote up. I told her that it was illegible and she spelled his name wrong, so I had to rewrite it. She was fuming. Oh well, sucks to be her. Boss gave me a disapproving look, but nothing she could do without proof that Greedy wrote up the ticket, which was long gone by then. So glad to leave that crappy place in my rear view mirror. Zero regrets. I just find this whole thing incredibly dysfunctional and bound for drama and upset workers. When one person can spend apparently 5 seconds to fill out a ticket and get an equal split to somebody who did literally most of the work, if not all of it pretty much. I mean, how is anybody going to stay happy long term in a job like that, where I'm assuming your wage is also dependent on those tips? Our next story is Rectum. A buddy of mine, my gym trainer, had a roommate who routinely stole his food. It wasn't that the dude was hungry, he was just trying to flex. Now, I often make things like mead, pickled things, and jelly or jam. I share them with my friends. Since my buddy is a fan of hot, spicy food, I gave him some of my homemade jalapeno jelly. I make this in four different heat levels, from mildest to hottest, regular, afterburner, weapons grade, and ring of fire. The regular is more of a light sweet flavor. Beyond that, there are consequences the next day if you catch my meaning. Most people who are not masochists are satisfied with afterburner or perhaps weapon grade if they want to walk on the wild side. Ring of fire is the sort of thing that makes my spice loving mother say, I love you, but please never do that to me again. A little bit of it goes a long way. I gave my buddy a jar of ring of fire, which he tasted, perhaps a teaspoon's worth on cream cheese, and found to be good because he's a freak that way. It's a slow heat that builds gradually and ends with an eruption, much like the active volcano chain after which it's named. My buddy warned his roommate not to touch the jelly because it was very hot. But the next day, while my buddy was at work, his roommate chowed down and ate more than half the jar. What followed was a day or two of screaming from their shared bathroom until the colon demon was thoroughly exercised. The guy actually had to take time off work because of something he did to himself after having been warned. From that point on, the roommate never touched my buddy's food again. Hey, this guy has literally no one to blame. Although I think somebody needs to investigate OP as to what they're making here. Because if there was something that bad that somebody had to take time off work and miss work because they were so spiced out, I think OP did pretty much make a biological weapon. And that's apparently a step above the one called weapons grade. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another absolutely awesome revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. 
That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.